And children, today's probability is, drum roll please, theoretical probability. Maybe we've heard the phrase theoretically speaking. Anybody? Just me. Sorry, just me. And when we talk about theoretical, anybody know what that means? You say in theory, theoretical probability is what should happen mathematically. What should happen by way of math. Casinos stay in business because of theoretical probability. You know, they know the math. They know how much they can pay out for every winner. They know how many people are going to lose. And it doesn't always work out. The opposite of theoretical probability is not really the opposite. Is experimental probability. And we don't have to write that down, but that's a little different. Experimental is what really happens. So we'll put that as a side note. Experimental is what happens when you do the experiment. Do the experiment. For example, if you're flipping a coin ten times, theoretically, how many heads should you get? Flip a coin ten times, Chase, you should get five heads. All right. If you actually do it, you may only get four heads. That's experimental probability. Now, if you flip a coin enough times, you keep going with your experiment, these two will always come together in the end. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yes, maybe Chase, when he flips his coin 10 times, gets four heads. But I can tell you, when he gets to 100 times, he's probably going to get like 49 heads. And when he gets to 1,000 times, he might get 499 heads. And when he does 10,000, he might get 5,004 heads. Eventually, the, the okay. Here's what we have to understand here. When you talk about theoretical probability, we have what's called the sample space. Anybody on what sample space is? What's that? All the possibilities. Yes, all possibilities. Let's do, for example, if you are, ladies and gentlemen, uh, rolling. A number of cube. The sample space on your typical six sided number cube, sample space equals, and when you do sample space, please use set notation, which means you make this pretty little brace thing. What is your sample space for a number cube? Well, you can roll a one, a two, a three, a four. Five or a six. That is your sample space. And once you have your sample space, you can figure out the theoretical probability because the theoretical probability is this. Here's how we show it. Probability is the capital P. The generic form of probability there is the number of favorable or the ones you want. Favorable over total outcomes. It's a pretty simple little concept. We've done it multiple times before. So if I, let's say I'm spinning this little number cube. By the way, did you know that opposite sides of a number cube always add up to 7? Opposite of the number 1 is the 6. Opposite of the 3 is the 4. Opposite of the 2 is the 5. Did you know that, Fish? No, but that rocks my head. That's I know, I need that. <laughs> so, Fish, the probability of rolling a six would be how many sixes are in my sample space? Just one. How many outcomes were there? A total of six. So one out of every six times, or the probability is a one-sixth probability. Does that mean you won't roll 25 times and not get a six? It could happen. But I guarantee you, if you roll a million times, we're probably going to get closer to one-sixth. We should try that. What about this? What's the probability of rolling a number that is less than 4? So if you're figuring that out, you have to know how many numbers are less than 4. How many are less than 4? Just 3. 
Does four count? No, because four is not less than four. So three six, which obviously we reduce to one half. If you have a deck of cards, what is the probability of picking, I don't know, a jack? Well, you don't have to draw down the whole sample space. You know that in a deck of cards, there's how many cards? In a deck of cards, how many of those cards are jack? You got the jack of spades, jack of clubs, jack of hearts, jack of diamonds. So reduce that one out of every 13 times you should pick a jack. Now we're just doing the simple events. We're not doing compound ones because things get a little more goofy with that. Um, oh boy. Oh, no. I don't know if we have to do any more than that. Do I need to do any more than that? No, we're going to stop right there. Because you obviously need time to do this whole thing, right?